Hello, my name's Dren. I'm currently living in Croxley, which is sort of northwest London way. It's actually about six miles from the M1 N25 junction, if you want to sort of see the area I'm at. Now, I have a plan to sell up everything, buy a catamaran and go sailing the world. Now, as we're in tier five lockdown at the moment, the project's on hold. So instead, I'm still making a video every day, but I'm going to make them about um, more random subjects. Now, I hope that's interesting enough for you to stick with the channel until we can get a boat and do some sailing. <laughs> I'd like to thank Tom for his excellent cover of the Liberator theme song and I'd like to recommend his band called uh, Schlembe Soup. Uh, they do a very impressive live show with loads of Belkan gypsy dancers so there's a link to them below. Now if you can play an instrument or even if you can't when you'd like to record uh, an audio or a video please email it to me at the address below and uh, also let me know how you want to be credited or uh, maybe you don't. <laughs> Hello, it's day 204 of the Liberator project and today I thought I'd share some of the things that were happening during the Liberator project's blackout period when I wasn't sharing any videos. I mean I was still working towards the project just not sharing that information. So um, one of the things that was interesting to me was the idea of an amphibious vehicle. Now the reason for that is that one of the real inconveniences of having a boat is that if you can't moor it at the jetty, you've got to ferry yourself between the shore and the boat. So because of that, most boats carry a little dinghy or a motor launch with them. On a catamaran, they are generally carried on davits. The crane light device is on the back. Now, typically, they can only lift a couple of hundred kilograms. When you arrive on shore, uh, you've, you still need a safe place to moor your boat. You need a secure place, you need to make sure it's safe and not in anyone's way. And that, uh, you know, that would be inconvenient. But also then you're still stuck at the marina. You still need to get, ten, you know, need to get somewhere. So even a trip to the, uh, you know, supermarket, to, you know, is expensive and it's time and it's a real chore. Especially if you need to stock up with supplies, which is very likely if you're living on a boat, or you need to go to like a hardware place and actually get some materials that are bulky. Very, very difficult to get them back on board. So um, if I was moored at Marina, say, and I, I got a job doing some contracting work, then you've got the real problem of getting on site. Now, that's um, going to be hard. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming I can get another contract and we've returned to normal at this stage. But it's still very difficult, you know, having a normal life if you live on a boat. Now, um, one option is to have a larger motorboat on, on the Liberator and carry something like a small scooter. Here's someone carrying a trike on their canal boat. Now, I don't think it would work very well on a cabin cruiser in the sea. Now, even if that was possible, you'd still need a place to securely moor the boat. And to be fair, a scooter can't carry very much. Now, I've ridden a motorbike twice in my life and both times I crashed and fell off it. So I really don't think that's a very good solution for someone like me. Now, the best solution will be to have a vehicle that could make the short crossing between the Liberator and the shore and yet still be a perfectly road legal car. Now, I've looked into this and there are a few options available. Now, one of the options would be to have something like an amphibious quad. But these are no good for my requirements as a usable car and they cost about $25,000 and the nicer ones are $50,000. Now that's way too expensive for this channel. This is the Dutton Surf. It has a top speed of only six knots, but that, that's fine for my needs. The kit to build one of these was £10,000 and it would have been a great solution. However, kits have not been on sale for over 10 years now. I found a ready-built Dutton Surf for sale, but that was £23,500, so way over budget. It was also bright yellow instead of Liberator Green, also known as Le Mans Green, so it would need to be resprayed. My favourite car was the Panther Water Car. This is based on a Wrangler Jeep. It's a 3.7 litre supercharged V8 engine. <laughs> it can do over 38 knots. 
but it's huge. Bear in mind it has to be carried on board the Liberator, which is just a 12 metre long catamaran. So about a tonne is all you can manage to carry on the back. Now, uh, this Jeep weighs about a tonne and a half. It's also only available in America, so it's left-hand drive. And most importantly, the basic entry-level model is over $100,000. So it's, uh, it's way out of my league. There are vintage water cars, which are light, but they're very hard to find for sale. They tend to be left-hand drive. They're terrible boats and worse cars. This is the 1960s Amphicar. They are for use in calm water such as lakes. I really don't think they could be used safely in the sea. The Amphicar has only about 50 brake horsepower from a 1200cc engine. I just don't like them very much. And the cheapest one I found for sale was £57,000. This is the VW Type 166 swimmer wagon. I quite like this, but one sold at auction last year for £85,000 and a fully rebuilt and refurbished one sold for €149,000. <laughs> I found several military vehicles, however they're far too heavy. Typically they weigh many tonnes. Even one in poor condition is far too expensive also, I really don't want to turn up at an electronics company in a military vehicle, so it's really not a good solution for me. Hovercraft are not road legal. They would be lethal on the road. While I was searching, though, I found a flying hovercraft. I just thought I'd show you that for fun. So, how could you get an amphibious vehicle for about £10,000? Well, the answer is you have to build it yourself. Now, it's better to start with a fully road legal car and modify it because that's the sort of main use of the vehicle. And, um, you know, also I want it to be a, a reasonable car and it seems a better starting point. Now, um, I've seen Top Gear. <laughs> it, it only has to ferry you, uh, like, you know, between the shore and the uh, catamaran. It's only got to travel a kilometre across the water, so it doesn't have to be a particularly good boat. So it's more important it's a good car. So how hard can it be? <laughs> well, I don't want to make this too long a video, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to go through the requirements for a donor vehicle that can be converted to make it into a, a reasonable a reasonable boat. I hope you know you hope you join me tomorrow for that. Now, um, if you've liked today's video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't, well, thanks for staying with me. But uh, you know. At the moment, the videos are a bit random, so who knows what's going to be on the channel. I hope you like something soon. And now I'd like to play you out with Tom's excellent version of the Liberator theme song. Good night. <laughs>